Hi, hello, 안녕, 네입니다. 반갑습니다. 반가워요. 반가, 반가. Welcome back to my channel, guys. My name is Ray, and if you're new, welcome to my channel. And if you're returning, welcome back. If you guys have a minute, please go follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I respond much quicker on those platforms, or if you guys just want to chat, you guys can hit me up over there. Now, on to today's topic. One of my favorite Korean brands out there in the market right now. The one and only Pyongkang Yun. If you've followed this channel for some time now, you already know how much I love this brand. Their signature line, the blue packaging, has always been and will forever be my holy grail. And I'm sure most of you have used their essence toner before, which is a cult favorite. This brand is known for their minimalistic ingredients list and their no BS formulations. What I mean by that is no fragrance, no extra chemicals or agents that would harm your skin in the long run. But today's video is not about my holy grail collection. We are going to be diving into the new world of Pyongkang Yul's calming collection or their calming skincare line. So get ready, grab a snack, and let's begin. Kaja! As I've mentioned before, Pyongkang Yul already has a very successful and powerful skincare baseline collection. I've been calling that the signature line or the signature collection. So why would Pyongkang Yul want to launch another collection? knowing that their original idea and their original collection is so successful already. Well, many businesses have to compete with other brands and companies in order to stay relevant in the market. Personally, I think that Pyongkang Yul is capable of taking on most, if not all, the Korean skincare brands out there. Their products are effective and priced at an affordable to medium price range. And when their products go on sale, for example, at Style Korean, we can expect these products to go as low as $10 to $20 per product. Moreover, I think that Pyongkang Yul's brand philosophy is much more cohesive and stronger than the other brands out there. But like I said, they're still a brand nonetheless, which means there is this expectation to keep pushing forward and be more innovative as the company evolves and grows. And I think that's why this calming collection was introduced. For the past, I want to say, five to seven years, we've seen this boom in Centella Asiatica or Sika or Manicasticide as a very popular skincare ingredient, especially in the Korean skincare space. And products with Sika are fairly popular among the younger demographics. And so I have reason to believe that Pyeongkong Yo also chose to launch this calming collection to draw in more skincare enthusiasts from the younger age group. I've already told you guys how much I love their signature line, right? Right. So naturally, I'm going to be comparing the two. The signature versus the calming collection. After using the calming set for about three weeks, I can confidently say that I do prefer the signature line over the calming collection. But here's why. The signature essence toner itself is much more hydrating. The calming toner, on the other hand, is a bit lighter and it doesn't provide as much hydration as I would like. And of course, the most important products of any skincare sets or collections is the moisturizer. The moisture cream from their signature line is a lot richer than their calming barrier cream. I think the standout difference between the two is that the moisture cream from their signature line is better suited for oily skin type people, while the calming barrier cream is much better for drier skin types. I'm also going to add that the the moisture cream has a thicker consistency than the barrier cream. With that being said, the calming barrier cream is actually much lighter and spreads thinner than the moisture cream. The moisture cream sets with a matte finish while the calming barrier cream has a bit more dewier look to it. And it might just be me, but I've noticed that the calming barrier cream causes a bit more stickiness compared to the moisture cream. One last thing I want to point out is that the original or the signature line 
products have a very, very short ingredients list. Whereas the Calming Lineups products all have significantly lengthy ingredients lists. Now this doesn't make one collection better than the other, but I do believe in less is more as a general concept. Whereas the Signature Collection is known for their no BS formula, the Calming Collection seems to be overly inspired by a lot of the other K skincare brands out there. And I get it, it is very tempting to reproduce a lot of products using a very popular ingredient and that would be Sika or Madacasticide or Centella Asiatica. Again, it's not a bad thing, it's just my preference. So those were my general thoughts on both the Signature line versus the Calming Collection. Now let's move on to the Calming Collections products. I know you guys came here for this, so let's jump right into it. Kaja! Oh, Chakaman, before we begin, I have to share with you guys the key ingredients or the common key ingredients you will find across all these products. There is Madacasticide and Sika, which are sometimes interchangeably known to calm the skin. This is the ingredient that allows Pyong Kang Yoon to call this the calming line. There's also hyaluronic acid, and I feel like we haven't talked about this mega ingredient in a long time. It's so common nowadays that I'm sure everyone's tired of talking about it, but it is still a very key and crucial ingredient nonetheless. Last but not least, we have Honeysuckle Flower Extract, which is great for calming the skin. It's been known to help people who have rosacea or eczema. Alright, now that we got that out of the way, let's move on to the products. Coming in at 150 milliliters for only $9 when on sale, this cleanser easily made it into my skincare rotation. The cleanser comes packaged in a pump bottle that has a mechanism that turns the liquid content inside into foam. I have to first say that while I do find this cleanser to be effective and gentle, it does contain a disodium sulfosusinate, which is a surfactant. Surfactants are mostly found in soaps and it's the key ingredient that makes things foam up. Surfactants are also more stripping on skin, causing the outermost skin layers to dry up much faster. Typically, I use a cleanser in the shower, so I wouldn't really notice the tightness or the stinging sensations, if there are any, while I'm under running water. But if I were to use a cleanser over the sink and wash it off, I would notice that tight pulling sensation on my skin surface after rinsing. All this is to say that I actually don't recommend using this cleanser for dry skin types. For oily skin types, on the other hand, I do recommend it. And I recommend using this during the daytime, during the nighttime, whenever you need to cleanse your skin. Because it does effectively help remove the overproduced oils and control the sebum level. And in turn, it would make your pores appear smaller and the blackheads appear smaller as well. What I love most about this toner is that Pyeong Kong Yol uses a very similar key ingredients found in their signature line, Willow Bark Extract. Willow Bark Extract is a natural BHA that helps excavate sebum to free the pores from clogging. This is what makes our pores appear smaller. The less congested they are, the brighter your skin appears. This goes for all skin types, skin tones, and skin colors. Also coming in at 150 milliliters per bottle, you can find the Calming Deep Moisture Toner between $12 to $18. As I've said before, this toner is not as hydrating as their signature essence toner. But there are still some benefits to using this Calming Deep Moisture Toner. Just like the cleanser, this toner also also contains willow bark extract. It also contains AHA and PHA to help remove dead skin cells on the skin surface. This helps speed up the skin cell turnover rate. New skin means healthier skin. You can use a cotton pad to apply this toner or, like me, just pat it in with your hands. There's no fragrance in this product as are all Pyeong Kong Yol products, but you do notice a hint of a warm note, which I believe comes from Sika. The texture is very, very watery and absorbs quickly into your skin. I especially like using this toner during the hotter seasons because it is super light and it is very calming and cooling on your skin. But if you're kind of tight with budget and and you're thinking about choosing between the calming toner or the signature essence toner, I would actually go for the essence toner because it is more hydrating and you can use it all year round. And I just feel like you're gonna get more out of it with the money you're paying as opposed to the calming deep moisture toner. Moving on to a product that I'm very excited to talk about, the mask pack. A little bit ASMR for you guys. 
you like that don't you the mask pack comes in a pack of 10 sheets and it would cost you around 17 to 20 dollars so about two dollars per sheet which is actually on the pricier side of sheet masks nowadays because right now you can pick up a korean skincare sheet mask for about a dollar to even like 50 cents for a sheet mask when on sale of course and also depending on the brand like all other sheet masks you've ever used pyongkong yul also recommends putting this on or leaving it on for 10 to 20 minutes what i appreciate most about this sheet mask is that it does contain ceramide np which as you guys probably already know it helps strengthen your skin barrier i have to say that this sheet mask is extremely hydrating in fact it might be the most hydrating product out of the entire collection i don't use this sheet mask every night you shouldn't really be using a sheet mask every night because it is overkill and it's expensive using it every night unless you have the money then i'm not going to sit here and judge you but i also don't have time for sheet masks now because i just finished with finals and now i'm switching over to a new work schedule i have so many other things i want to do that i'm just like i don't have 10 to 20 minutes to spare for skincare at this point i stick to my six minute skincare routine and i move on but when i do have time i I do thoroughly enjoy this sheet mask a lot. I see different opinions in terms of when the sheet mask should be used. Some people say you can use it before the toner while others say use it after the toner. I personally use this after the toner because it helps lock in the properties of the toner. Right after I finish the sheet mask, I go straight to the moisturizer. Now, if you're someone who wants extra hydration in your sheet masks, like I'm talking about extra, extra hydration, I would actually recommend the Cellomax Noni Ampoule Sheet Mask. Because comparing the two sheet masks side by side, although both of them are amazing, I did find that the Cellomax's Noni Ampoule Energy Sheet Mask was a bit more moisturizing and hydrating even after you take off the mask but if you're a diehard fan of pyongkang you like me this sheet mask will definitely get the job done it would definitely keep you super hydrated throughout the night it is just so beautifully done moving on to the star of the show the calming moisture barrier cream this moisturizer comes in only 15 milliliters for about $18 retail or $13 when it's on sale. There's currently a sale going on at Style Korean and I'm going to have all the links in the description box below so check it out right now. This little jar is packed with the best ingredients you can ever wish for. Madacasticide and Sika, which we've covered many times on this channel. Hyaluronic acid, as I've mentioned before. Ceramide, which is the building blocks of the skin barrier. Shea butter, which creates a sealant over the skin to lock in moisture. Squalene, which is able to penetrate deep into the innermost skin layers to provide hydration without clogging the pores. And last but not least, we have tea tree leaf extract to combat acne buildup. Talk about an all-star ingredients list. I just can't at this point. But I am a bit disappointed that niacinamide is not in this moisturizer. Come on, it's 2021. Niacinamide has been a popular and very known to be effective ingredient that works for all skin types for the past, what, 23 years, I want to say? Maybe 15 years? I don't know why niacinamide isn't found in this barrier cream. I think that had they incorporated niacinamide in this barrier cream, it would make this barrier cream just the most powerful powerful moisturizer in the market. This moisturizer is still very powerful nonetheless. I enjoy using it both at night and during the daytime. Like I said before, this barrier cream actually causes a bit of stickiness on your skin. So if you're not into that or like you just don't find it comfortable to have your skin feeling a bit sticky during the day, I would you know stay away from it or just put like a smaller amount of it i personally don't mind it too much but even for me like during the hotter seasons or the hotter climates in new york city we do get a lot of humidity here i do feel uncomfortable when i have this on especially when it's on my neck area and i'm moving around and i feel a stickiness on my neck it's just a bit too much but other than that it is a very 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 rich and powerful and effective moisturizer so if the stickiness is too much for you or it's a 
deal breaker for you, I would go with the Moisture Cream by Pyeong Kang Yul. Or if you have drier skin, you can actually opt in for the Pyeong Kang Yul's Nutrition Cream, which I have heard is great for drier skin types because it is more hydrating compared to the Moisture Cream. I've also heard from other skincare gurus or skincare enthusiasts on Instagram or on YouTube here saying that this barrier cream isn't actually sticky at all. So it could just be me. Like if I'm sweating a little bit more, it causes the stickiness to be more apparent. And I'm also an oily skin person, so that can contribute to my sensitivity to the stickiness. Moving on to the texture of the Moisture Berry Cream, it is a bit more on the watery cream side of moisturizers. It's not as thick and buttery as the Moisture Cream by Pyeong Kang Yul, which I love. I love when moisturizers are lighter and thinner and watery like this one because it is easier to apply. It spreads easily and evenly on your skin and you do get that instant satisfaction of hydration on your skin once you put it on. And once it sets, you get this this calming and also cooling effect on your skin. It almost feels like one of those comforters that you throw on in an air-conditioned room and the fabric of the comforter just kind of raises your skin and makes you feel cool even though it is like a cloudy pluff kind of thing. Um, I don't know if I'm making sense. I hope you guys understand this analogy. If not, I'm sorry. This product acts almost like a light sealant for your skin, keeping the hydration and moisture from escaping, which is exactly what we want in a moisturizer, a good moisturizer. I wish Pyeong Kang Yul would make a 100 milliliter bottle of this, just like their moisture cream and their nutrition cream, because why not? Why? Like, what's the reason for not having a 100 milliliter bottle at this point? Right now, I am almost halfway through with this one. As you can tell, I've been using it for three weeks and I'm almost down to half of the jar already. Whereas the Signature Lines Moisturizer would last me for at least six months. Overall, I really, really like this product, but if I have to choose between this product or their Signature Moisture Cream, I would go for the Moisture Cream. It's just superior. I'm sorry, Junko Mule. It's still your product, you know? I, I still love it. I love this, but I do love your Moisture Cream a lot more. That's a wrap on Pyeong Kang Yul's Calming Skincare Collection. Since this is Pyeong Kang Yul's newer line of skincare products, I do expect them to keep updating and improving their formulas, especially with the foaming cleanser. If they can provide us a gel cleanser with a very similar ingredients list, that would be amazing. The products certainly provide that calming, cooling, and soothing effect as Pyeong Kang Yul advertises, but they do lack a bit in the hydration department compared to their original and signature line, of course. Nonetheless, this calming lineup surpasses many other brands who rely on Sika to be their key ingredient. I think Pyeong Kang Yul did a very elegant and ambitious job in trying to cater to a younger demographic. I also think that this collection would draw in more skincare newbies to begin their skincare journeys. As I've always said in the past, you can't go wrong with Pyeong Kang Yul's products. I've tried nearly every single one of their products, especially those that are designed for oily skin, and I've loved every single one of them. Needless to say, I am very happy with the calming skincare lineup. I hope this video helps clarify some of the products for you. As usual, please feel free to comment below any concerns or questions you have about any of these products. I will try my best to answer them and and yes, I do answer every single question. I do lurk in the comment section, so just be on the lookout. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you guys liked it. I'll also leave the product links in the description box below in case you guys are planning to shop for some of these products at Style Korean. A big thank you to Style Korean for sponsoring this video. 감사합니다. 사랑해요. Finally, I'd love for you guys to subscribe to this channel and join our skincare family. And turn on that bell notification while you're at it. Thank you for watching and thank you for returning to this channel. I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, be safe, stay hydrated, and be gentle with yourself. Annyeong!